Okay, uh, so therefore, uh, in, uh, in manufacturing, uh, school threads, we need to measure if the pitch is uh, even, okay, cons constant, if not, uh, you will have uh, the various type of error. Huh? Okay, one of the error is uh, progressive uh, pitch error. Okay, so uh, this uh, is when you uh, may, you are manufacturing the on the lathe machine. Okay, the velocity of your tool and your work is constant, but not correct. Meaning, uh, this is the pitch right. This is a pitch. So. Uh, it is constant. Okay, constant means uh, this is a uh, two point one maybe. Okay, there's an error, right? Suppose we two, but it's two point one. It's incorrect. The pitch is incorrect. Incorrect, but it's constant means uh, is next one will be also two point one. So that's progressive pitch error. Why is called progressive? Uh, so uh, the So this is the graph, the error division diagram. Okay. So pitch number one, the error is point 0.1, right? Point 0.1, positive point 0.1, so plot one point. Then after that, second pitch, pitch number one, pitch number two. The cumulative error, point 0.1 plus point 0.1, so point 0.2, point 0.2. So this is a cumulative error, point 0.2. Okay, then the third one, cumulative error will be that point three, right? Okay. So like that, the graph is like this. Okay, any question? Progressive pitch error. It can be also negative, lah. Right? Maybe nineteen or uh, one. Suppose we do your one point nine, right? Next one also one point nine. Okay, so negative, eh? It can go down this way. Okay, so uh, this one uh, negative. Error is uh, minus 0.1, right? Next, cumulative will be minus 0.2, minus 0.3, and so on. Any question? So what does it, what is the problem here? Why is it uh, you have this problem? It says here, it is uh, due to the incorrect gear trade, or approximate gear trade between the work and the two lead screw. So as a, Person who manufacture on the lathe machine, you must all know all this term. What is a gear train? Uh, what is a work? What is a work and two ratio? Right? You need to know. What is a lead screw? Uh? Then uh, you must know. Uh, your thread is metric, right? Okay, but the uh, lead screw is inches, so you need to uh, have a uh, gear to convert metric to inches. Or, or uh, inches to metric train. Huh? Okay. So you must have a, a gear. So this is why I meant. Huh? Okay, this is your lathe machine. Uh, your uh, holding device that hold the job between center. This is a spinner that rotate. Okay. So uh, the lead screw is here to move the. Uh, <coughs> Carriage, okay. The carriage uh, will move, okay. So in one round, you expect that uh, you move two mm. The pitch is two mm, right? In, when you when the job rotate one round, this uh, track, uh this two should move two mm. Of the trees, So how to do that? You must have a gear. Connect uh, the spinder. Okay, to the lead screw. Okay, with a gear train, right? With a gear train. 
a proper gear trade which you calculated, eh? which you are expert already in mechanics, you study that gear ratio or whatever. Eh? So it's okay. So normally we would like to take a light cut first. After fixing the gear, the jug, take a light cut. Uh, apply perrusion glue on your workpiece. Okay, take a light cut and use a pitch gauge to check whether is it 2 mm. Suppose with 2 mm, whether it's 2 mm. Okay, so this is a gear train, right? the gear train you see. Okay, if it's not 2 mm, then you need to uh, check the gear. Clear? Okay? Otherwise, you have this uh, error, uh, pitch error. So, this is a gear, uh, this is a box nut of your lathe machine. This one is the lead screw of your of your lathe machine. Okay, so there's a lever right. When uh, you on the machine at uh, appropriate speed, you engage, uh, then it, the carriage starts to move, right, to cut your track. So the gear tray must be perfect, the box nut uh, should not have wear and tear and so on. Eh? Okay, so progressive pitch error can be caused by pitch error. Sorry, yeah. This is the pitch error. Uh, yeah. It can uh, be caused by the pitch error in the lead screw also. Uh. Okay. And other generating machine. So, uh, lead screw is this. Uh. So, there are few reasons. Uh. This is the pitch of the lead screw. So, there might be some error here also. Uh. Or this one, uh, the box stuff. Okay, next is the periodic pitch error. Periodic. Periodic uh, means this. Alright, the uh, work, the two and the work velocity ratio is not constant. Meaning, uh, this is the pitch supposed to be 2 mm, right? Every pitch must be 2 mm, but it is not. Okay, first thread is 2 mm. Second thread is 2.1. Uh, this is what it means. Then third thread, uh, 2.3 fourth thread uh, become 2.2 .2. oh sorry 2.2 is here okay 2.3 okay then after that uh, go down 2.2 .2. like share market like that go up and down then after that 2.1 okay and then 2.0 or uh, go down further 1.9, then I'll say go up again. Okay? So there must be some reason. Then when you plot the graph, uh, it becomes like this. Uh, up and down. Cyclic, right? Cyclic. We are talking about uh, cumulative pitch error. Your deviation diagram here. Or the error diagram. Every pitch, uh, what is the error? Cumulative pitch error from one thread to another. Okay, that's about periodic. Eh? So what causes? It may be caused by the pitch error of the gear train. Pitch error. So your gear, after manufacturing, this is a gear, right? So there might be a pitch error here. Okay? Circular pitch error. The pitch is not equal. So it can be. Eh? Or due to the lead screw, uh, they are warm up truss spaces. Okay. So uh, this is what I meant. If you look at the lead screw, right? Uh, this is a lead screw. Right? So the, the uh, contact surface uh, of, of this, okay, and the contact surface of this are wear out. Okay. The box stuff and the lead screw. After some time, you wear out, right? So this is another reason, uh, periodic. Okay, any questions? School threads? Okay. Okay, so uh, topic number four is a uh, topic whereby you need to know how to measure fitness. Uh. You it's ask a practical question. Uh. Although uh, section A might not come up, but uh, section A, you have a practical question, right? But we can test you on your theory, right? Huh? This is flatness measurement. 
we ask you a practical question. How to measure, I think in, in your uh, quiz, I, I, I ask you a question like how to measure a concave, convex, lapping surface and how to analyze the value of the flatness. Can you still remember how to do? So uh, apply what you learn in the practical. Okay? So in the practical, we will learn how to measure flatness of a concave or convex surface. So this is your workpiece. Okay. Then uh, measure the flatness using a uh, optical flat. So you need to use a wedge method. So refer to your step. Okay, first contact right. Produce a wedge. Then after the next step, you need to uh, make sure that you you uh, produce the pincher side. So you uh, so this is the second step, right? Make sure it's flat. Then observe your your. This is your workpiece. Okay, the contact point is here. So you can draw the step. Huh? That will be good. Huh? Every step you, you draw a diagram. Then observe. Once you have contact point, observe. When you lay down your optical flat, observe the fringes. So your fringes can be this way. So your fringes, uh, uh, I hope you can draw properly. This is uh, the way to draw your fringes. Okay. So is this a concave or convex lapping surface? Convex, convex right? Eh? Very good, eh? Convex. Okay. So it is a convex. Uh, and, and, uh, if, if you uh, to contact this way, okay, and your fringes is the other way. Eh? So this is a uh, concave, right? Concave, concave uh, fringes, eh? concave. Then you need to further. Uh, Adjust okay your uh, optical flat okay to see whether you can get ring like this. Uh. In the case of a uh, concave, right uh, center there will be a black dot, a blue eye. Okay, so the best is so this is spherical, right? spherical concave, spherical. So these are things that uh, we learn uh, in the lab. Hopefully you can remember. Okay. Then uh, how to calculate the flatness value? Flatness value will be equals to. Uh, this is important. Uh, you need to draw example and give me flatness value will be equals to randa divided by two multiplied by n. And the uh, randa normally is a very small number, right? Point five micron. Okay. Divide by two. Value will be uh, exact. If it's not given, then you just uh, give the formula. Okay. In this case, uh, n is what? This is one, two, and three. So number of fringes is three. Then you can uh, calculate the flatness value. Okay. Any question? If it's not given value, just uh, express. Uh, give a formula. Uh. I'll give an example of a wavelength. Okay. So uh, that is about this topic.
Okay, round us. <laughs> it's on the tutorial, then you do the exam. Is that that time, right? I think we don't see a memory small. See a memory Yeah, first one. Just time. Okay, we'll show you. So this topic is about uh, why we measure roundness, important of uh, measuring roundness. In roundness, we cannot just measure dimensional dimension. Okay, this way, yeah. and this way, okay. or that way, and then you get a reading and you confirm that this is round. Okay, so, but it might not be round. Okay, so therefore you need to measure roundness using a roundness machine. Okay. So roundness is defined by two concentric circles. Two concentric circles. One uh, is the outer circle, which is called the minimum circumscribing circle. And the internal inside profile circle is known as the maximum inscribing circle. So that's the definition. Eh? So uh, after measurement, you need to analyze the roundness profile to get uh, your results. So uh, this is standard. Huh? Okay. So whenever we uh, analyze to give you the value, we use the standard. Huh? VS or ISO standard is okay. But uh, in this standard, all are the same. Okay, whether you use PS standard or whatever standard. Yeah? So PS3730. Okay, there are four of them. Okay, some of them give me a wrong answer. So please stop. Uh, okay, I make a mistake here also. Normally not necessary. This one, uh, not necessary to uh, write a C here. Okay, first method is called the plug gauge center method. Plug gauge center method. Second method. To get a roundness value is called the ring gauge center method. And then we have what we call minimum zone method. Okay? And a least square center method. So if you list these four, you get four mark already, right? Yeah? Many, many of them get correct. Yeah? But you need to explain, uh, explain one of them. So many of them uh, explain using a least square method. Right? Or a simple one, eh? right? Use a plug gauge center method. Plug gauge center method meaning uh, mainly for internal, uh, in, inside profile, right? In, internal. Okay, or a hole. Plug gauge. Eh? When you're measuring uh, roundness of a, intern, of a hole, then you use a plug gauge method. When you are measuring a sharp, a sharp. Okay, in those days they will use the ring gauge center method. Yeah. Any question? And this uh, plug gauge center method is also known as the maximum. Right? This method here is also known as the maximum. Inscribing. Center method, okay, or circle method also can. Ring gauge method is also known as minimum. Okay, circumscribing method. Or circumscribing uh, circle. Method. Or center method. Huh? It's okay. Circum minimum. Uh, circumscribing uh, circle method, eh? reference circle method. Eh? Sometimes they like to use reference circle method. So you actually find a reference circle. 
Okay, any question? Then you need to explain. Eh? All right, I've given you back uh, your quiz paper, so uh, I hope uh, you can practice. So plug gauge center method means that this is the center of the largest circle which is just contained by the trace. You get the largest right? circle. So this is your uh, profile, roundness profile, maybe like this. After magnifying 5,000 times, uh, 5,000 times, you can look like this. Uh. Okay, uh, maybe another point like this. Uh, so something wrong here, something wrong. So you find a circle, which is the largest that you can find to to uh, touch two or three points inside. Uh, the largest circle. Then the center point will be here, right? Okay, using the same center point, draw another circle that cover the profile or the bed uh, the peak. Okay, then find the radius. Okay, this is uh, R minimum. This is uh, R maximum, right? R maximum. Okay. Then from there, you can find the roundness value. So, roundness. Roundness. This actually equals to the R maximum minus of the R minimum divide by 5,000 in this case. Okay. So the value will be very small, right? Uh, then you will multiply by 1,000. Okay. Change to micron. Okay, any question? And so on. Right? So these are simple things. Huh? Sure. So it's uh, found by this large circle, this uh, inside circle, the largest that you can find is by try and error, but in today's context, you can calculate using computer. Okay, and we'll contact at least uh, the tracer at least two or three points. At least two points, possibly more. Okay, then the outer circle is drawn from this center. So once you get this big circle, then you get center point, right? Uh, then you draw another circle that touch the peak. We call peak lah. This peak and belly and peak and belly. So the deviation of roundness is then the radial distance right, between the two circle divide by the magnification. Okay. So this is what I meant. The radial uh, difference divide by magnification, right? But we like to multiply by 1,000 uh, because the value is so small compared to micron. Any question? Uh, so I didn't draw an circle, I just draw a radius. Right? Okay. So this is uh, called maximum ins inscribed reference circle. So we are interested to find the reference circle in order to find the peak to valley height right now. So roundness is to find the peak to valley height of the profile. Okay. The ring gauge uh, center ring gauge center is the center of the smaller circle which will contain the trace. So again the same thing you got the trace of the roundness Maybe like this. Then you find a circle which is the smallest that you can find. The, the smallest, huh? The smallest circle, huh? Smallest. That can uh, cover the whole profile. Touching two or three points. At least minimum two points. Okay? Then once you get the center. You, you draw a circle, right? You must know where is the center point. If you don't know, something is wrong. Okay, then, with this center point, you draw another circle that touch the valley. Touch the valley, maybe somewhere. Here. So your compass is very important. Uh, bring a compass. Okay? Bring all your instruments. Then, Find the radius between the two. Alright, this is R minimum. Okay. 
and then this is R maximum. Like the same thing, right? Roundness will be up. the different in the two radius divided by magnification. So the ring gauge center is a center of the smaller circle which will just contain the trace. Again, it is found by trial and error and will contact circle at a number of points. In today's contact, of course, uh, done by computer. Lah. Okay? You can, uh, that's why we click right. Click, click, click. I select the uh, evaluation method. This is sometimes called evaluation method. Then the inner circle is also drawn from this center and the deviation from the roundness is found as uh, what we discussed in the PG plug gauge center method. So the above, both methods based on trial and error and different operators could obtain different results in those days. Eh? Because we don't have computer, high tech computer, no. We, everything is manual, right? I manual. But this is a basic concept that we need to know. Okay. The very fundamental. So uh, this method is also known as the minimum circumscribed reference circle. Yeah. Okay, the other method uh, in those days we use the minimum zone. Right? It says here that the plug gauge and the ring gauge circle respectively because they are simulated the use of uh, these gauges. I just suppose you know, uh, right? Uh, for plug gauge, uh, okay, is for internal. Uh, Okay, for ring gauge uh, is for sharp, right? Uh, sharp measurement. Okay, for and or hole or sharp. This is what I meant. So this term, however, will be depleted. Okay, because checking with a gauge is essentially a three-dimensional check. So uh, therefore, uh, yeah, two dimension is not enough, right? Uh? Okay for uh, this reason uh, uh, the minimum zone is used uh, all right minimum zone so you need to measure many sections uh, not only one section many right one section is not enough uh, because it's 2d right right this profile we, we measure is 2d so in today's context you find cylindricity that will be the best uh, cylindricity uh, Rather than uh, around the cylindricity, eh? see the cylindricity in many sections, then computer uh, that would be the best. Don't just measure roundness. You have to measure roundness can many sections. Okay, minimum zone is the using two concentric circles, a pair of concentric circles, such that uh, the the uh, concentric circle will have annular zone, right? Annular zone. This zone here should be the minimum. Find two concentric circle. This zone is the minimum and can cover the whole profile. Uh, so that's another method. And then uh, you don't have to use this C uh, minimum zone. That's all. Minimum zone method. So the roundness. Uh, Error is then uh, the width of this uh, zone right divided by the magnification. Okay, so this uh, method uh, that use by try and error. The best is still the least square method. is a mathematical method. Okay, you find the uh, using uh, this uh, this way. Uh, this method. Uh, there's a formula, right? Uh, Okay, so this is a roundness uh, profile. Okay, find about in the center, one point origin. Okay, this origin. Uh, and you pick any point, any point will do. Okay, then count, uh, with this uh, method, you can find out the least square center using this formula, right? X equals to, from this origin, okay, you get another point, X equals to two sum of X. Divide by n, 
and a y plot another point y equals to sum of y divided by n. So this is the least square center from the uh, origin that you have picked. Any point close to the center of the profile. Okay, so the method is very easy. Okay, divide this into 12 equal part, right? 12 equal part. Okay, then uh, just measure the coordinate of this each point. This is point number one. Okay, point number two, point number three. Okay, point number four. Okay, and so on. And taking into consideration from the origin, the sign of the value, important negative value or positive value. Then uh, use a table to compute the sum of x okay, and the sum of y. Then use this formula to calculate a new point. That point is called the least square center point. Right? And also we have what we call, uh, you are able to obtain the least square circle. That would be better. But uh, normally we will just find the center point. Least square uh, circle is difficult to get. <laughs> because there's a definition here. Okay. So the least square center is the center of the circle. They, they talk about least square center. Okay. They never talk about uh, plotting this circle, huh? reference circle, no. So uh, this least square center is the center of a circle whereby radius chosen so that the sum of the square of the radius distance of all points on the trace. And this circle is the minimum. So there's actually this diagram I, I showed you. Okay. So we are interested in this point. Eh? We are not interested in this circle, no. We are interested in this point. And then with this point, then you can draw the two circle, right? One touching the belly, one touching the uh, big okay, to get the roundest value. Of course, you can use computer to calculate. Uh. If you plot, uh, actually, uh, if you look at uh, your plot okay, in the computer, you can see this circle, uh, this square circle. Okay, about this topic, any question? No one? Uh, good. Okay, so then the next topic, last topic. Uh, roughness, right? Roughness. So roughness concentrate on the parameter. Uh. This type of uh, question. Uh.